multiplex sclerosis is a complex autoimmune disease that has um, features of a vasculopathy as well as features of fibrosis or progressive fibrosis that can affect multiple organs. So the diagnosis of systemic sclerosis can actually be relatively complex as uh, systemic sclerosis is a very heterogeneous disease. So in making a diagnosis of systemic sclerosis, um, it really relies a lot on physical examination as well as clinical history. So some of the, the clinical features that I'll see with systemic sclerosis can include um, Raynaud's phenomenon where the fingers are extra uh, sensitive to the cold where they'll actually turn white and blue and can also result in some ulcers on the digits if not um, aggressively treated. Um, can be seen with um, evidence of, of interstitial lung disease, as we've been talking about. It can be associated with pulmonary arterial hypertension um, in these patients. We can see skin changes um, marked by thickening of the skin. Sometimes that can just be limited to a little bit of thickening over the fingers, but it can also be associated with really widespread um, skin thickening involving um, all of the extremities and some of the face. Um, so it can be uh, really profound in terms of the level of fibrosis that's occurring. It is a chronic disease. So once a patient does have it, we unfortunately don't have a cure. So we really focus on being able to treat the different manifestations of disease to improve overall uh, morbidity and, and mortality of the disease process itself. The prevalence of systemic sclerosis can, uh, it varies a little bit by region. So in, in the U.S., we've seen prevalences range from about 100 to 300 per million. Um, in Europe or uh, Japan, we've seen those numbers uh, a little bit lower around, uh, I think the last number has been 88 that I saw per million. So it can vary a little bit by region. The potential for development of interstitial lung disease and systemic sclerosis is relatively high. Again, it depends on the definition that we're using um, for interstitial lung disease. So um, just simply having interstitial lung disease by imaging, we've seen ranges from 65% to 90% by imaging. Um, the subset that are going to progress to have um, more severe lung disease, um, that subset is lower. Um, actual percentages can be a little difficult because it really depends on the characteristics of the cohort that we're looking at. So we know that there's certain risk factors in scleroderma that are associated with progressive disease, like diffuse skin thickening. Um, there are certain autoantibodies that we test for in the blood um, that are associated with uh, progressive lung disease. Um, race, so Caucasian versus African Americans. African Americans are, are at higher risk for progressive lung disease. So um, percentages can be actually a little bit differ, difficult to, to really pin down just because it can vary quite widely by the cohort. There's been, um, you know, in one particular cohort of diffuse cutaneous disease, there's about a thousand patients in this, this particular cohort, about 16% um, of these patients developed pretty severe interstitial lung disease um, with this restrictive lung physiology on pulmonary function testing with an FBC less than 55% um, that developed um, that developed really severe lung disease or interstitial progressive interstitial lung disease and scleroderma. When you have lung disease that's associated with systemic sclerosis, the healthcare resource utilization uh, increases due to the uh, pharmaceuticals and the hospitalizations and the procedures. Uh, we don't track that specifically 
uh, because they are relatively small numbers of individuals, but certainly the, uh, the healthcare resource utilization increases with the, uh, with the disease and with the comorbidities.